to discuss uh, what Brexit means for young people uh, with uh, two young people on both sides of the fence, really. Femi Oluwole, who is uh, co-founder of Our Future, Our Choice. It's a group of young people campaigning for what they call a people's vote on the uh, Brexit deal. And also Tom Harwood, who ran the national student wing of the Vote Leave campaign and who opposes a second referendum. Uh, thanks very much for being with us. Um, Tom, you first of all, just spell out what you think Brexit means for young people in this country, and I'm guessing you think it means a brighter future for young people. Oh, totally. I think Brexit means for young people what it means for everyone else, and that's greater accountability, uh, more democracy, and more options that the government can take in terms of policies that can make us uh, richer and freer going into the future. Um, Femi, what would you say to that? I'd say that young people need two things, primarily. We need stuff to be cheap and we need options. Uh, Brexit, by all, by all accounts, will make things more expensive because we're cutting off our ability to trade freely with our closest and cheapest trading partner. Secondly, options. Uh, we currently have the birthright of living and working among th in 31 countries across Europe. That c it cuts off our options. So cheap stuff, th things get more expensive, and we have fewer options. It goes against what young people need. Tom, is it fair to say in the referendum more young people voted remain than leave? That's absolutely true. What's quite interesting in that is if you look at a uh, class breakdown of that, if you look at working class young people, almost half voted to leave and only 53% 53 vo 53 voted to remain. Um, much high, much uh, higher numbers of, um, of more middle class or upper class young people voted to remain. Um, but yeah, as a whole, young people were more likely to vote um, so they thought the it was in their interests to, to, uh, they not, were, to not have Brexit, to stay in the European they were, Union? They were also more likely to not vote at all. And so if you look at um, numbers of people, if you look at turnout, it, it's pretty, pretty uh, uncontroversial to say that students and young people basically weren't that interested in the, in the debate. Fermi, I mean, Brexit is happening, whether you like it or not, and you don't like it, but um, ha what sort of Brexit would you like to see that would you believe be in the best interest of young people in this country? The idea that there is a Brexit that would be in the best interest of, of young people, as, as I explained before, it, it cuts off our options. We need jobs. And quite simply, I mean, take Japan, for example, they said quite simply that because the UK they saw it as an as an avenue to access the European market they're likely to they, they've said that they will be pulling out of their factories from the UK to the rest of the EU purely because it makes more sense because they're in the single market so those but what about those, new those, trade agreements with the United States with Australia New Zealand the, all the freedom to create new trade the most fundamental principle of economics is the rule of gravity you trade most with the countries that are closest to you which is why even Trump as crazy as he is chose to leave Canada and Mexico out of his little trade war because they're the closest company countries to him whereas we are, are cutting off our ability to compete in our closest and cheapest so market about 80% of which, 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 the UK which, 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 economy which, which, is services which, rather than goods which obviously the which, same which, gravity which, models don't apply because um, you can not, trade in the same language across the internet. There are many innovations that mean gravity is becoming less of an issue and less of a factor in terms of le trade less of a factor, as time goes on. Less of a factor, but, but always it will always continue to be a also, factor. Also, it's because, important to because, note because, that 80% of the UK economy is domestic. About 10% is non-EU and about 10% is EU. So we shouldn't let the 10% of um, EU trade regulate the 90% of non-EU trade. And really, if we want to create jobs and opportunities and growth, we have this huge opportunity to be world-leading in the kind of uh, regulation that we set domestically. We can be okay. world-leading uh, yeah. in let, terms let, of let, animal welfare. Let, we can let, be world-leading in smarter regulation for financial okay, services. Family, so. Let's address the notion of, um, firstly, world-leading. Who, who has been setting these standards regarding uh, data, data protection? It has been the EU. In fact, and so, so much so that the companies in, in America have followed suit. As far as, so who, so as, as, far as as far as who will be setting the standards, the global standards looking forward, is it going to be the market of 65 million people or is it going to be the market of 425 million people moving forward? As far as, and that's the reason why we are actually looking at becoming less sovereign as a nation because of Brexit. Because you, because Theresa May says we'll be copying the rules of the EU, but we'll no longer have a say in. Just, let, let's, just, just, move, let's just move away from the economy for one moment and just talk about education, which yeah. we were reflecting on there with Chris Morris. Um, Femi, to what extent do you think it will change uh, British students' educational opportunities leaving the EU? Uh, well, for one, um, being, being in the EU it provides an opportunity to get around an elitist system. We have a system in, in the UK whereby in order to go to university you need to pay £9,225, whereas in France it's practically free. And, and, and there are other places in the, in the EU where it's free. That ability 
is an, the, the ability allows you to get around an elitist system. It is better for ordinary people in this country to have more options. OK, but, Tom, Tom, reply to that. None of the data shows this. In the UK, we have more people from disadvantaged, going to, uh, dis disadvantaged backgrounds going to university than ever before because of the fee structure system that, that when you graduate, you make a contribution to your earning. It's not a tuition fee system. And they system. don't finish the university um, but, 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 but more than that, the UK has four of the top ten universities in the world. The EU has none. We have about seven of the top 20 universities in the world, and the EU, again, has none. And one really, of the, and when it comes one, to the one, academic one, sector, this is where we are absolutely world-leading. And one of the reasons so why... One of the it's reasons one of our why, strongest cards in the Brexit negotiations. One of the, one of the reasons why we're, we're world-leading leading is because the EU, the EU has the Horizon 2020 programme, which is basically a massive, a massive funder for research. Now, the UK benefits massively from that. In fact, out of the 5,000 research grants that were granted, we got 1,400 of them, despite being one of 28 countries. We benefit massively from the okay. EU. Very, very quickly, only got a minute left. In 30 seconds, Femi, why should there be what you call a people's vote on the Brexit deal, which other people might call a second referendum, which they would say is maybe not democratic? People have already had their voice. Well, there's this idea that it would be undemocratic for us to vote on the Brexit deal. That would, that would suggest that the people would be capable of undermining their own will. People, if they make a decision, that is the decision of the people. If the people, people sent, people sent the government off to make a Brexit, a Brexit that would work for them, if the government has failed, people should be the ones who decide. Now, and, I, and they wanted three things. They wanted sovereignty, they're getting less. They wanted an NHS, we're losing our doctors and nurses. They wanted, they wanted to be better off, all estimates say we'll okay. be worse off. Tom, a very quick reply to that. They can call it a people's vote, they can call it a people's referendum, they can call it a second referendum. Fundamentally, they don't like how the first one won, and they're going to keep asking for more until they get the answer they want. And it's, it's an outrage, really. But if you think <laughs> all right, all right. We've got to, got to try. I know we could debate this all night, <laughs> and Join you guys probably will. <laughs> Tom Harwood, uh, Femi Oluwole, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very Cheers. much. Uh, we're going to check out the weather prospects now. No disagreement on that, I'm sure. Ben Rich has got the details.